Howdy hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. My name is Benjamin Cahoon and today we are gonna be making some coil vessel sculptures. When I'm setting out to do something more sculptural, like a coil vessel with carvings on them, I really like to go through a sort of planning stage. And normally I just have like a bunch of doodles in my sketchbook, but I thought I'd show you some of the process of creating some of these vessel forms. I really enjoy having kind of like a two-part hipped vessel so that we have kind of like this kind of funky, interesting shape to allow the sculpture to kind of like emerge on the surface. So how I do that is I normally draw two circles or kind of like oval shapes of some sort on the page. Um, just like different sizes, different shapes, just kind of like the more rough, the better. And then I go through and I trace around and the vessels kind of just like a appear out of those things. Like that. Ta-da. Today I know I want my piece sitting somewhere around 12 inches by 12 inches after it's been fired. And so I'm gonna start by drawing a box shape and the vessel will fit somewhere inside of that box. And so I draw my first oval shape of sorts, um, take up as much of that box as possible, and then I'll draw that second oval shape right on top of it. And I do like that one, so we're gonna keep it. Alrighty, so now we have our clay. Um, we're getting ready to get started. I normally like to have a board so that I have something to move my piece around as I work on it. And then I also have one of these like fun spinny table banding wheels. Um, you don't really need this, but I like it so that I can rotate the piece as I'm working on it. it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna set my board on the banding wheel and I have my little doodles that I'm gonna keep next to me for reference. And when I'm building a coil vessel, um, normally I start with kind of a pinch form at the bottom. I'm gonna want a little bit of water, just to help out. So now I have my water and I'm gonna start kind of like forming the base of my piece. And then I'm just gonna start to pinch the sides up. Because with coil building, all I'm doing is like, we're stacking clay on top of um, itself. So just giving it a, like a little place to start is wise. Now that we have our base, we're going to start um, actually rolling the coils and stacking up the form. Um, I do this, I don't normally roll my coils when I'm making big forms like this. Normally what I do is I just take the clay and I kind of like squish it in the air, which makes me look a little crazy and I know that, um, but whatever. You can look crazy, that's great. It's kind of meditative, I like it. It's kind of like making pinch pots. Just repetitive, get to do it. Now that I have this beautiful coil, what I'm gonna do is just kind of like start wrapping it around the piece, stacking it on top of the layer that was there before. Like your ceramic teacher is probably gonna tell you that you need to score in between each of those. And yes, you probably should, that's best practice. Um, but sometimes I'm a lazy duck and I don't wanna do that. So I'm not going to this time around, but you should, I guess. But I find that when I'm smoothing out both sides of the coil, there's enough connection that I'm not super worried about it falling apart. And now that I'm done smoothing out the outside, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the inside. All right, say. So we're just, gonna, we're just gonna do that again. We're just gonna keep on going. But I know because of my doodle, I know that the piece is um, kind of 
going inward. It has like a, a little low hips. Um, so I'm pushing the clay towards the center as I am pinching. I'm making coils on a Monday morning. What more is there? It's, she's a little long. Um, so I just keep on going. <laughs> so I know my clay shrinks about 12% um, through both fires. And I also know that I want this piece to sit around 12 inches tall. And so I am gonna take a moment and measure the piece and see where it's sitting. I'm hoping for mm, about 13 inches tall. It looks like we have definitely quite a bit of height that we can still get um, on this piece. So let's get to it. is built we're getting ready to actually start the sculptures on it so I have just like a wooden dowel like a shish kebab shish and I'm just gonna doodle some leaves on here leaves are one of those things that like I've been drawing for so long that they just kind of appear they're like coffee leaves laurel wreath leaves they're like coffee leaves laurel leaves they're just leaves and I think they're pretty and so I draw them a lot um, but I want these, um, but I want these leaves to kind of like snake around the piece so that we have some visual interest going all around. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Just kind of like lightly incising into the form. making some funky shapes, just allowing it to be whatever it wants to be. You're, you can be a leaf, you can be a not a leaf, I don't care. Do what you want, do what you desire. So as you can see, I also trimmed off the bottom a little bit off camera so that there's a visual shadow that raises the piece off of the surface that it's sitting on a bit. It's a funky little design element trick. So now we have like our doodles made. I am going to use a loop tool, which comes in like all of like the basic pottery tool sets. And I am going to start removing clay from the surface here to help delineate some of these like leaf forms. So I normally start by going around the leaf shapes a little bit, like so. And you can see that I am creating kind of a live edge here that um, kind of like just says like the leaf, the leaf is here. I am the leaf and I am here. I'm also being careful not to carve through the piece completely. <laughs> this is another meditative process for me, to be honest, like, it's not a lot of thought that goes into it. It's just me carving away, making the leaves show up. It's great. It's wonderful. And I still have some plasticity to the clay. So I can even use my finger and help smooth out some of this. Normally I like to wait till this is a little bit more um, rigid or leather hard before I do this, but we're working with what we got. So the reason why I like to do this like really organic shape um, with all of these carved lines is that in a wood fire, 
A lot of the texture and the color happens because of wood ash that flows through the kiln. And so by creating these lines, it kind of guides the wood ash around the piece and gives it places to pool and collect and then to drip down. And it's just like really, really pretty and fun. Alrighty, so now I've outlined the entirety of the leaf, I'm gonna come in and help delineate in between the leaves so that they actually read as separate forms. So I do that by just like doing the same thing, creating um, lines by changing the plane. But I'm feeling like this one's like a super loosey-goosey, like we're just here to have a good time type of pot. Um, so I'm not gonna spend a crazy amount of time on it, to be honest. Awesome, so we just finished carving out the interiors of these leaves and it's pretty close to where I want it to be. So yeah, that's that. If you want more pottery and art shenanigan content, then make sure you're following along on my TikTok and Instagram. And if you want a little bit of an inside scoop behind the scenes, you can sign up for my newsletter on my website, benjaminkahoon.com. Later on, I'll probably do some like smoothing out of some of these shapes. Um, there's some little like boogers hanging out still, but it's pretty much where I want it to be. Should we do the thing? Yeah, we should. All right.